In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do derivatives of natural logarithms with the chain rule. So we're going to jump straight into some examples. Our first example is what is the derivative of f of x is equal to ln of 5x squared plus 12. Now in our previous videos, we had the rule if y is equal to ln of x, then dy over dx is equal to 1 over x. But in this example, we're dealing with ln of 5x squared plus 12. This function can't be manipulated to get in the form of y is equal to ln of x. Those tricks that we used in the previous video, they're not going to work here. So what we're going to have to do is use a different trick. And we're going to use one of the most tried, true, and tested tricks in calculus, the chain rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub u is equal to 5x squared plus 12 into this expression thus getting the expression f of u is equal to ln of u. Now I have my expression in the form y is equal to ln of x, in this case ln of u, and I can do its derivative. So to get the derivative of f of x, df by dx, because we want the derivative in terms of x still in the end, we're going to do the partial derivative di f by di u times du by dx. This is our chain rule. So if f of u is equal to ln of u, then di f by di u is going to be equal to 1 over u, simply using our derivative rules for natural logarithms right here. Now the second part, du by dx, we have u is equal to 5x squared plus 12. So du by dx from this expression is going to be equal to the derivative of 5x squared is 10x and the derivative of 12 is simply 0. So putting this all together I have df by dx is equal to my di f by di u 1 over u times du by dx 10x. Now I still have to substitute this u term I can't leave it as u so I have one more change to make df by dx is going to be equal to 1 over 5x squared plus 12 all times 10x. This can also be written as 5x squared plus 12 as my denominator multiplying 10x into the numerator I could put it here. Either expression works for me these are my final answers. Now as with the exponential functions in our previous video, there's a pattern when we use the chain rule for the natural logarithmic functions. So we can deviate from our rule and examine that pattern. If y is equal to ln of some function of x, u of x, this was our u of x, then dy by dx is going to be equal to 1 over u, what we had here, times the derivative du by dx. And that is exactly what we did here. We had di f by di u is always going to end up being 1 over u. f of u is always going to end up being ln of u. So di f by di u is always going to be 1 over whatever's in the brackets in front of the ln function. And then du by dx is going to be the derivative of what's in the brackets in front of the ln function. So this expression is provided in your formula sheet. It is the chain rule, but it saves us the tedium of having to do it, um, to go through all the steps in the sequence every single time. Let's do one more example to show how we can use this. Example two, what is the derivative of f of x is equal to ln of 2x cubed divided by 2 minus x squared? So in this example, you can see that I've got quite the function here in front of my ln. It's not just ln of x, so I can use this chain rule instead. Now I could jump right in and start doing this chain rule, and it would work out just fine. When I do my du by dx, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So one thing I also suggest to my students is that before diving into any rule, see if you can simplify your expression. See if you can make it look a little bit nicer. So what we're going to do first is use some of our logarithm rules before we get into our chain rule. So in this case, you can see my logarithm is a quotient. I don't want to do the quotient rule when I get to be doing my du by dx. I'm a little bit lazy for that. So what I'm going to do instead is use my quotient rule 
for logarithms. So m is my numerator, n is the denominator in this logarithm. So f of x can be rewritten as ln of what's in the numerator, 2x cubed, minus what's in the denominator, 2 minus x squared. Now for this first term here, I could manipulate it further using my product rule and my power rule, but I'm not going to do that this time because I want to demonstrate how to use the chain rule. This second term here, this one can't be manipulated any further. I'd have to use the chain rule anyways. So now to do my derivative, f prime of x is equal to ln of 2x cubed. So doing the derivative of this, I'm first going to do 1 over u of x. So this part highlighted in orange is my u of x for this. So it's going to be equal to 1 over 2x cubed. That's my u of x times the derivative of u of x. So the derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. So now I've done the derivative of ln of 2x cubed. Next, I'm going to do the derivative of ln of 2 minus x squared. So in this case, the u term is going to be 2 minus x squared. So doing the derivative, I'm going to have 1 over u of x. So that's going to be 1 over 2 minus x squared times my du by dx. So that's the derivative of 2 minus x squared. So the derivative of 2 is simply 0. The derivative of x squared becomes 2x and it has a minus because there was a minus sign before it. So now I'm going to clean up this expression a bit. I've got 6x squared over 2x cubed minus a minus. So this is going to give me a positive. I have a minus and a minus, so it gives me a positive. 2x over 2 minus x squared. Now this first term could be simplified a little bit further. 6 is divided by 2, giving me 3. And x squared can't, goes into x cubed, leaving me with x to the power of 1 in my denominator. So f prime of x is going to be equal to 3 over x plus 2x over 2 minus x squared. I could write this in other forms using common denominators or other forms of simplification, but I'm going to leave it like this. This is the derivative of the expression that we have. Now, like I said at the beginning, this could have been done differently. You could have used this as your u term to begin with. All of this could have been your u term, and you could have done the chain rule from the get-go. And within the chain rule, you would have had to use the quotient rule but I opted to manipulate the equation first to avoid having to use the quotient rule within the chain rule. So that's it for the derivatives of natural logarithms using the chain rule.